um, she's a retired teacher. She taught math, English. Been married 54 years. <laughs> she said 50 good years. That means anything. Moved in New Braunfels in 1971. It was just Braunfels back then. It wasn't new yet. And it really, uh, she was, like I said, she was, and she was the president, past president of 2019. If you guys out there who haven't been president yet, right? Yeah, be. And it's a very interesting story. So her husband was a golf instructor down in uh, San Antonio. And they decided to come up to play the Rumble Sports. They played the course. Well, he played the course. She read. And when they got done, they wanted to go to Krause's because Krause's is this famous restaurant. They couldn't find Krause's. So they stopped at a golf station, not a golf station, a golf station, and asked for directions. And they're driving to Krause's. They see this beautiful house. And they're not looking for houses. And they drove to the front of it, and it's and the rest is history. Bonnie Leach, here you go. So, my house is on a five hundred foot land. So, I am seven blocks from downtown. And, and it does pay off many times. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, one arts tonight. And of course, uh, you have to always start with, with a joke. Uh, this is uh, a caterpillar walked into a bar. Uh, and the caption, in case you can't read it, is I'd like to see the amazing Spider Man eat 200 times his body weight in milk. <laughs> <laughs> So, why do we care so much about monarchs? Well, first of all, they're absolutely not down or just beautiful. They're also very, very unique. They're the only butterfly in, in the Americas that migrates, but even bigger than that, of all the butterflies that migrate, and there are a few, they're the only ones who take a whole year to migrate and who migrate thousands of miles over four generations and they find their way back home. Now, where is home? Well, home is down in Mexico, right about there, right, uh, right south of Monterey in the mountains. Uh, and I want to talk about the, a couple of things with this. I want to talk about the four generations first, and then I want to talk about the two groups of monarchs. Um, and I'm going to start uncharacteristically with the fourth generation. So the fourth generation is way up there in the north, in North America, North of America. It's towards the end of the summer, and something and scientists don't know yet what it is, triggers the monarchs to start flying south. This one monarch flies from North America all the way down through Texas to Mexico. Same butterfly over winters in Mexico. And same butterfly starts coming back, and, and right after they start coming back, they make another generation. And that generation is the first generation. That happens February, March. Then that generation goes through Texas again, all the way up to top of the United States, but it takes three generations. There. It's the fourth generation that is really so amazing. Now, 
I want to talk to you a little bit about the Western monarchs, okay? There are many fewer Western monarchs, and they're all in California. Um, but some of them get a little bit out of California, but basically they're in California. Now, that's why we love the monarchs. Why are we worried about the monarchs? Because we really are. I want to give you a picture of those two migrations, okay? The Eastern, or some people call it the Central, and the Western. Now, this is Monarch Watch's um, bar graph of monarch populations. And, and uh, these are the ones that, that winter in, in Mexico. Remember, the California guys never get down there. Right? These are the majority of the monarchs. And because the only place that they're all together is Mexico, they measure them in hectares. That they're occupied in the forest, okay? Starting with, with 94 and ending up with uh, 2020. Now you can see there's lots of variation here, but you can definitely see that there is a trend, and that the trend is definitely down. Now, let's look at the Western, which in some cases is even more interesting. Okay. This is 1920, uh, this is 2020, sorry, uh, again. And what you've got is another bar graph, okay? Now, this is taken during Thanksgiving because that's the closest thing to getting all of the monarchs together in California, okay? Now, you might notice that the very last one, 2020, you can't see anything. And this is why you can't see anything. In 2020, there were more Starbucks in California than there were sighted monarchs. Now, was this because people weren't looking? Not really. You see the, the little blue line graph? Those are the number of observers. So they're looking, but they're not finding any monarchs. So people were tremendously worried. But there was a great bounce back in 2021. From 2,000 monarchs, which is all they found in California, in 2020, there were 250,000 monarchs. Now, I will tell you that monarchs can reproduce, but they can't reproduce like that. So it's a mystery about what caused this, this great fall off and then rebound. And there, there are three possible reasons. Uh, one is that other butterflies moved into the vacuum. Uh, another one is that, that the monarchs were in sites that the observers hadn't found yet. And then the other one is that because of the continued drought, the monarchs had moved inward, inland, and therefore, you know, they didn't find them where they should have been. But the whole picture is really pretty tragic. Over the last 20 years plus, the monarch population as a whole has declined about 90%. Well, why is this? Well, there's several reasons. <laughs> One is the number of, look at Comal County, look at the number of subdivisions that have come up in Comal County in the last 20 years. Now, for those of you who've been here long enough, when you used to drive to Bernie, it was a country road, and that's all it was. Then, of course, then the, there's been that terrible drought in California, a long drought. And, and of course, here, 2011 was one of the worst drought years in our history. So there's been a problem with drought, which, of course, affects the, the uh, monarchs. <clears throat> and then there's all that insecticide and herbicide. And I can promise you that native wildflowers and milkweed are not Roundup ready. Then there's a, been a lot of overwintering uh, habitat loss because there's been a lot of illegal timber uh, um, of timbering in those mountains where the monarchs love to overwinter. But that has finally been curtailed by the Mexican government. So we'll see what happens with that. And then this is what's been happening. So, now what? 
Well, I'm going to talk to you a bit about present efforts in Texas and a little beyond to try to save these creatures. And then I also want to talk to you about what you can do if you get inspired and you haven't been inspired before. So first of all, let's talk about what other people are doing. Okay? We'll talk about the brothels and the parks, and then we'll talk about the developments in Comal County. We'll then talk about a, a, a coalition between Texas and, and the federal government that's trying to protect them, and then we'll talk about just people. Now, the Bronx has set up a series of goals to help the monarchs. And one of those involves the three parks, well, let's say the two parks, and then a really important road in the Bronx. The first one is Fisher Park. We'll talk about that a bit. Of course, they have a monarch way station, and they also have a festival that you have, if you haven't gone to it yet. Um, it's every October, and they should be um, advertising that pretty soon. Uh, then there's the Land of Park Family Garden, uh, which is, uh, was dedicated last year, and I'll talk to you about that. And then there's a, a, a wildflower area on Fredericksburg Road, which runs right by Land of Park and hits Landa, okay, in case uh, you're not that familiar with the problems. So, in 1929, the, the mayor, um, Baron Castile at that time, uh, adopted the Monarch Pledge that really pledged that New Braunfels would be a city that would try to save the monarchs. By the way, the city of Garden Ridge has also taken that pledge, and, and I believe, from what I've been able to tell, is a real leader in it. So they set up the first Monarch Fall Festival in November at that time. And then they have worked so hard those, the last three years that the Parks Department was in the final four in the National Park Leadership Circle last year. Now, I don't know how, how many, I hope all of you have been able to go to Bishop Park. Uh, it's our one of our um, newest parks and they're still clearing out we sag and and, and uh, other and, uh, and non-native plants and seeding and trying to bring back the blackland prairie, doing all sorts of things. And by the way, uh, you can always help with those if you want. Now, this is a, a picture not of this year's but of last year's uh, monarch uh, fall social, uh, and you notice it says social distancing. I'm not sure that will be true this year. I hope not. Okay, so Fisher Park, I really encourage you to go and, and look at their Monarch Way Station if you haven't done that. Landa Park is one of the oldest parks, if not the oldest park in the Broncos. And as part of that park, there is a Landa Family Memorial that's been there since 1955. And then it's been changed into a butterfly garden, uh, which is another example of community teamwork. Um, you have the Lindheimer, Master Naturalist, you have the Friends of Bunny Park, you have the Native Plant Society, you have a lot of people coming together to make this garden work, which was, as I said, finished and dedicated last year. Now, these are, are park employees who uh, were working on laying down around the memorial, you can see the memorial there, the, the new Monarch <coughs> way station. Uh, the, the memorial was dedicated in 1955 by Joseph and Helena Landa, uh, uh, actually in, uh, for Joseph and Helena Landa by their grandchildren. And I don't know if you know the story, but, uh, during the depression, the landers owned all of that area and they gave it to the city of New Brunswick. And one Saturday, everyone in New Brunswick came and they started clearing land and park, which had just grown over like crazy and, and made it their own. So I really suggest that you, that you see this. This is the way 
right at, after they have, they have kind of faded out that the um, the way station look. And you can see the two uh, butterfly uh, benches. Those are in honor of Rosemary Gregory and Arlen Seals, uh, who wrote um, the Rockwell's Historic Land of Park, the Springs and People. And so they dedicated those benches to those two women. Uh, you can see when you drive uh, by through Land of Park, you can see those benches, and that lets you know where to pull in and go and look at the park. And this is the way the park, oh, well, the, the garden looked after it had been developed. It's really lovely. It's worth a trip. Now, Fredericksburg Road. I found out about Fredericksburg Road, I think, in 2018. There was this young couple, Cameron and Josette Hernandez, and they were milkweed searchers. And they had found out that, by the way, I couldn't find it. Fredericksburg Road and we looking at it, sorry. And they found out that there was all this milkweed along Fredericksburg Road. But guess what? The city kept mowing it just as it was coming into fruition. So they they alerted me and they had finally found someone to stop the mowing. Wonderful. But they started mowing again. So I called the city <laughs> to find out what was going on. Well, someone had complained. That there were rats that were coming from the milk. I know I did the same thing. I did the same thing. So, anyway, but what could I do? But actually, I didn't have to because, because of the mayor's pledge, the park department stepped up and guess what? They're not mowing it anymore and the milkweed has come back. Now, I also want to talk to you about the new West Side Center. And again, I don't know how much you, you go into New Brunswick and you find out about it, but it is going to be gorgeous. This is the new library branch. And Jennifer Hernandez is the honcho for that. Maybe I should say honcho. I don't know. Anyway, for that. Um, and uh, she's really, really worth knowing. Um, because she is the library's outreach coordinator. Now, this is a picture of, of Coma Master Gardener's um, <coughs> modern uh, way station now. Okay, but with the new park design, it's going to be much extended. And, and if you look up in the upper left hand, you'll see the monarch way station. Which is much larger. Uh, in the it's going to be in the shape of a circle, and then you see that there's a monarch butterfly garden also, and then you see that there's a monarch butterfly way station down here. So they are really, really going to take care of us. Okay. Um, if if you go. Along uh, the 35 access road, um, past uh, eight feet, well, I call it, we call it the ghetto H. It's going to be the big H. Okay. <laughs> Back well, on Walnut. Right, on Walnut. You keep on going along uh, on the access road, 35 access road, and then you'll you'll uh, there'll be um, a road that comes from San Antonio Street. You go past that. And then you just go like two or three blocks and you see this giant building that looks a little bit like an auditorium. Uh, it could be a church so it doesn't have a spire and that's the library. Now, the new library is gonna be completely different. And, and if you go there, you'll see that everything is, is uh, marked off and, and they're really, really starting to build there. So you're not going to see any of this for a few years, right? But you can still go to the West Side Center. It's just doesn't look like that. I'll let you. I'll let you guys know what it looks like that. Now, perhaps the best monarch way station or in butterfly gardens are at the headwaters at the canal, which uh, partnered with GOC. Um, which was a significant interest group 
um, that a, a couple of people started in, in 2019. And our first uh, project was to help the monarchs. Okay. So uh, that's why we partnered with the Headwaters. Uh, the Headwaters applied for a monarch way station and were granted one. And they received uh, lots of host plants and lots of nectar plants. So this year, there's going to be a butterfly uh, survey uh, at the headwaters, February the 26th. Uh, if you want to help, if you want to volunteer to help uh, with this survey process, uh, you can go there uh, the 26th, uh, but you need to let Jack down, and I hope you can see if you can't see his name, D-O-W-N-E-Y. Uh, and, and I tried uh, to put his link on something that you I thought I could give you and I couldn't. So do this, email him, jdowney at nbutexas.com and tell him that you're interested in participating in this survey and, and he'll put you still out. Now, local developments, and for this, I'm talking about land developments, okay? I'm gonna talk about two of them, which I think are, are models for what uh, um, residential developments or even large developments can do. And I'm gonna start with River Chase because it's the first one. And I think it's one that maybe is a better model for, for us as master gardeners. Uh, and almost as soon as River Chase opened up, there were members of, of who lived there who started a gardening club, okay? And they made two way stations. The first way station that they made was a protected way station, but you know, they're the same as the rest of us. They got deer like crazy. Okay, so you can see their fence and everything. Uh, they they really um, worked to get it, and it's beautiful, by the way. And I'll tell you how to find it. Okay, uh, you're going uh, out 306, of course, and then uh, you turn on a River Chase Way. Okay, if you're going from 35, it's going to be on your right, and if you're coming from uh, the lake, it's going to be on your left. You go down until you come to the great bank of mailboxes that all developers have to have. It'll be on your right. You turn into there, and there's kind of a U shaped drive. You go to the end of that U shaped drive and park. And there's a, a common area out there, and both of the way stations are there. And you can just walk and, and look at them. Now, this is the second one, and this is the more challenging one. They decided after the first way station to make a way station that wasn't protected. And what they did was this they got only native plants. And for a little bit, they protected some of them. But basically, what they did is every so often they had to replant. <clears throat> Because you know, you and I know that if deer get hungry enough, they'll eat plastic flowers. So, but they have managed, uh, and you see them uh, really starting this now, uh, to have a really pretty nice uh, modern way station here. And I strongly encourage you if you're interested to go. Now, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Veramindi. Uh, some of you might know that Veramindi. Uh, grew out of two family ranches, the Borchers Ranch and, and part of the Bork Ranch. And when, when the old guys die and, and the kids could sell it, they did. So um, because I taught someone who was one of the, of the first realtors involved, I was able to find someone else to talk to, uh, which I did. And I found out a, a couple of things. Number one, they were already planning some ecological uh, um, developments 
This is the regional parks linear open space. And I think you can see the parks that they that they are already have planned there. But I was able to talk to um, Emily Lane, who uh, uh, let's see if I can get her. Oh yeah, she's uh, I want to get her title. She's a development coordinator, and because uh, I was able to talk to her, uh, and because of the kind of person she is, uh, she managed to get way stations into the pocket parks. And there are lots of park parks in all of the little neighborhoods. So now they will have way stations, uh, thanks to uh, Emily Lane. Now, there are many done other things too. Uh, they got native grass. They're, they're not planning to irrigate anything along their, their major roads. And they also have lots and lots of trails that are built into their development. And, and by the way, um, I am I am not hired by Germany, but I, I think it's pretty interesting. Now that's what's going on in Comal County. Now I want to talk. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Now, really interesting development. There is an online butterfly ranch, uh, and it started I think last year. At least that's when I found out about it. It's called Texas Butterfly. Butterfly Ranch, one word, dot com. And if, if you go there online, they got a lot of interesting things going on. And they have a, a butterfly and pollinator festival in San Antonio every year, which you might be interested in. Now, what's the state of Texas doing? Well, TexDOT is working with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife to, to really start trying to save the monarchs. And this partnership, I cannot believe this partnership. This is what it's called. No wonder they call it CCAA. It's the Candidate Conservation Agreement with Assurances. And the most important thing there is assurances because they make promises to preserve that they have to keep. Now, with that, and this was last year, the Texas Department of Transportation dedicated over a million acres of land, including over 75,000 miles of center lanes to the conservation of the iconic monarch butterfly, meaning they planted native plants, nectar plants, and milkweed. So much so that this is a quote from that national organization, that TxDOT is a natural leader for this work given their well-established wildflower program. Of course, that was Lady Bird. And the key position along the Mile Park Flyway. And it was really, really made me feel good that, that Texas was a leader in something having to do with ecology. Now, here's some the future plans for that same program, okay? They're gonna establish 5,000 acres in pollinator plants. They're going to, have to put it around the wet rest areas. And then they're going to use funding, but funding for, for future planting of, of wild uh, flower and of, of milkweed. So that's what everyone else has done. So what can what can you do? What can we do? Well, one of the things you can do is you can join. There are several groups around the city that, that I talked about that, that you could join. You could even, you could even start <clears throat> if you wanted to. You can encourage local leaders to do the right thing. Um, if, if, uh, you're, if you're in a town uh, that hasn't taken, where the mayor hasn't taken the uh, pledge, you know, maybe you could do that. Or you could build your own. Um, Monarch Way Station. Now, Monarch Watch is the big national poncho when it comes to monarchs. And they give a lot of, of help in uh, how, how to build a Monarch Way Station. I have three um, handouts back there, okay? And one of them is 
what monochrome watch says that you need to do to build a monochrome station. And then I think I also included the application for that. So, got several groups in the county that, that you can go to. Remember the, the uh, Mayor's Monarch Pledge. And here goes. Uh, and, and here goes the do it yourself way station requirements from Monarch Watch. Um, first of all, your Monarch uh, way station has to be at least 100 square feet. Now, it doesn't have to be all the same place. You can have border plants. Uh, re remember the library, okay? You can have it in several different places. It has to have full sun and it has to have good drainage because the kind of plants that you're going to plant in there can have wet feet. Then you need two kinds of plants nectar plants and host plants. <coughs> now, the two kinds of plants. There are nectar thick, uh, native, colorful, and all season. And I've got also a, another one of the handouts is a list of all of the plants, okay, from Monarch Watch. And then the host plants. And I will say for this area, really there, there are three major host plants. There's the antelope corn, the green antelope corn, and then there's the zizotis. And I should probably take a little time now and talk uh, about um, <clears throat> tropical milkweed, okay? Because tropical milkweed is by far the most beautiful milkweed. <clears throat> and because it is, developers don't mind planting it. There's only one problem with tropical milkweed, and that is it just keeps on now, if you know milkweed, you know that the summer just knocks it down and it just basically hangs on until winter. And you just don't see much going on at all until the next spring. But not with tropical milkweed, it's gorgeous, 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 all fall. So I'm not saying don't grow it, but I'm saying you don't want that fourth generation of monarch who should be going down to overwintering to stop and just stay at your tropical milkweed. Now, uh, there are some milkweed uh, germination tips that I've got back there too um, from Lady Bird Johnson Wildlife Center. Okay, and, and they're pretty good. Um, I'll probably say this now. Milkweed is best started in the fall, not in the spring. That's the tragic part of this talk. Okay, it, it's not time to go out and start, you know, start your milkweed. You know, that's not really best. Okay, um, if you haven't started yet, wait until September. But you can start doing other things. So my journey on my way station started in spring of, of 2020. My first step is to find a sunny spot, which is pretty hard because my house is on a lot that's all the cons. But the place next door, which my son owns, has this great backyard that so the sun shines all day long. So I decided to use that. And then I had to decide on the shape. Now, you notice that that one of the ones uh, on the west side is going to be a circle. And I thought about a circle, but then I thought, oh, no, no, I'll do an oval. It's even cuter. Okay. Now, I must let you know that an oval to a math teacher is an ellipse. Okay. So I'll be talking about ellipses from now on, but you think oval. All right. Now, we're going to do just a little bit of math here, but it won't hurt. Okay. <laughs> Okay, now, first of all, a, a circle is a special ellipse, okay? So, everyone knows the formula for the area of a circle. Pi nope. r squared. Well, actually, the area for an ellipse is pretty close. 
like <coughs> the area for a square, the side square, like R square. But for a rectangle, it's length times width. Well, same thing here. For an ellipse, it's pi, not r, but half of the length, not r, but half of the width. And we've got the formula. So here we go. Gotta have a hundred squares. There's the formula. Okay, I'm gonna make it easy on myself, and I did. Pi is about three. You divide three into a hundred, you get about 30. Okay, now I'm thinking of two numbers whose product is a little of, about 30, but if I could, I want a little bit more than 30. Well, how about 84? That's what I decided on. Oh, okay. okay. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so pi disappears way back. No, way back. Okay. 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 You didn't get a plus look at that. Okay. Now, uh, this is the beginnings of my monarch way station. Because what I had was a bunch of photographs. And so, uh, thanks to my husband. Uh, we rotoed all of it, and that's what it looked like before I started clearing it. And I mean, hand digging, hand pulling rhizomes, and which, that was the hardest part of it was clearing it. And then, because I knew that we had to do like crazy, we had hundreds of here. Okay. So I knew that I had to protect it. So I got um, rebar, that, that was like fencing. And then I got that really cheap fence, uh, 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 well, I should have said my standards, okay? my fence posts. Then I got that real cheap fencing that bends really nicely, like the round and the curve. And I, uh, the stuff though, that gets smaller as you get, as you get down to the ground. Okay, so that's what I use. And then I started planting. And this is how I did it. I put the nectar plants in the middle of the oval of the ellipse. And then I put a little kind of fence where I, the two ends I kind of kept off. Okay. And then I took the three kinds of milkweed and I planted them on each end because milkweed doesn't like a lot of crowding. Nectar plants, I mean, they can crowd like crazy, but not milk. So this was the front of the waste station after things got going. Right. And I, I just want to talk to you about the stuff that I planted. Almost all of this stuff was either on my property or it was uh, around, you know, other people's, you know, property that I can take. Okay. So, Indian blanket, lantana, grateful mist, pink, even primrose, flame of hampa, indigo spires, church cap, prairie verbena. So, you know, I just had it all crowded in there. It was just having fun. Then, this was the back. And what I had was an old, old sewer pipe. And so, I made a, a monarch little bath out, out of that. Put the sewer pipe down, and then I put one, one of those terracotta dishes there, and, and put a couple of um, river rocks. Okay, and then every every time I watered it, and I watered pretty well the first year, I would fill the, the little what should we say pool up with a little bit of water. <coughs> and this was the other side. Now you notice that I couldn't keep everything out of, of the the uh, uh, milk. You know, I, I just couldn't bear to sort of let that Indian blanket you know, pull it up, so it went there. Now, I guess what I have to say here is that if I can do it, anyone can do it. Okay, I promise you. I have always said that I am a master gardener. I N O in name only. So I can, I can do the way station. Now, 
I've got, uh, oh, I'm sorry. This is the last thing I was going to This is the other, the other. I have some great news. Um, for those of you who know about wildflowers, you know that um, a, a Native American seed or North American seed is, is a really, really good company. And, and I don't work for them here. Um, you should. <laughs> but for whatever reason, they moved their warehouse way out of West Texas to Ukraine. And they're in that warehouse there in Ukraine. This is their 800 number. And uh, they're at www.seedsource.com. But even cooler, if you order something by phone or online by 11 a.m., you can get pickup the next business day because they're here. Okay. They're open Monday to Friday from nine until four. Okay. Now, if you do order online, they're going to charge, it's going to automatically charge you a shipping, which you don't have to have because you're here. So you can go there and, and kind of undo that before, before you charge a card. Okay. Now, I talked to a woman this last week, and she's so nice. She said, you know, she said, really, if you want to just come in, you know, and we're not busy. You can probably just do it right there. Okay. So um, they have everything there except roots. If you want roots, which of course we're not talking about tonight, uh, you'd have to go out to their farm and junction. Mm -hmm. Now, when, when I was uh, doing this, um, I realized that there were some questions that I had that I hadn't answered. But guess what? The PowerPoint presentation was already made. So uh, I'm going to answer some of the questions that I would have, that I had, and then I'm going to answer any that you have. Um, one is, uh, what about when the monarchs are coming through this, this spring? And I will tell you that if you go online and you try to find it out, you won't find it out. What you'll find out is every time you type Texas monarch, monarch migration, you find out about the fall. Well, I finally figured, find, find out why. Because guess who's here in the spring? That poor little pathetic fourth generation monarch or the first generation of that poor pathetic fourth generation monarch. There are not nearly as many monarchs in Texas in the spring. As there are in the fall. They've had three generations to reproduce and, and be much showier uh, in the fall. So that's when I would look for monarchs. Um, then uh, I think the, the other question that I would have is <clears throat> about starting about starting a way station. And, and I think really. You, you just need to start planning now, start building now. Um, you can plant nectar plants like crazy this way, especially if you don't have the, the Bermuda that I had to go through. Uh, but but I, would, I would wait until fall to do, to do the, uh, the milkweed. Okay, now, are there any questions? Yes. You had an online question. Could you do your slideshow back to the web address for the seed company? They oh, missed absolutely. That. That's they were writing it down. <laughs> By the way, that would happen when I taught math too. Now, of course, I taught math when you did it with an overhead. And, you know, and, I, and I would be doing things and, and my students would be doing like that. You know, so I would, I would finish and then I would just pass it to the front row and pass it back. So, you know, I guess. It happens. Okay, um, another, another, yes. How do you define a, a way station? Okay, now I define a way station the way Monarch Watch does. Okay, a way station is just a garden for Monarchs because they are on their way somewhere. But you want them to stop 
at your station long enough to get some food after maybe 20 acre time and go on their way. And that's why it's called my station. Yes. So I had I planted some tropical mint milkweed this summer. And um and then I noticed this fall I had the, the caterpillars from our cutters on. And I went, oh no, I'm gonna have to touch them. Was that wrong? I should have yeah, and, and I, I, yeah. I would tell you what's going to happen to them that you don't want to know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and that's, that's the point. Well, well, no, I have, I have had friends who have, who have, who raise flowers, and they will take them in and 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 baby them, and then let them out the next spring. No problem. If you want to do that. Be my guess. Don't let them go through the fall. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I would say, um, well, of course, it depends on when March starts, but I would say late August, because that's about when the earliest monarchs get here. <coughs> yeah, I, I'd say bye bye. I'd come down. I'd come down. They will come back. They will. Come oh, and they produce so many seeds. It's just, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, yeah, I, I, you know. Yeah. Um, well, oh, either I that or babysit them through the winter. Babysit them. Yeah, you have to remember. You do have an extra one the house. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can it. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Okay. I, I will have to tell you the first time that, that I got an email about speaking. Night, I was like, you got to but it was it was a gift because um, for for two years I've been working with significant interest group and I was able to put all of what I learned together and you know, thank you. Yeah. Uh, box to get in your little garden. Okay. So it's confession time. <laughs> I don't go to that garden except early in the morning, you know, to, to water or whatever. But I've been told by the, the people, the renters, like my son's renters who live there. <laughs> That I've got, I've they've seen lots of monarchs. Oh, one, one other thing I didn't talk to you about the difference between a monarch and a queen, because queens are gorgeous too, but they're not monarchs. And, and I'm sure most of you know why they look so much like monarchs, because monarchs are poisonous. So birds avoid them. Queens are not poisonous. Avoid them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bonnie. Great job.